So if I was beginning wildlife photography in 2022, what wildlife camera would I choose? Well, I think my biggest mistake in photography was not getting back into photography early enough. I didn't think digital photography was ever going to be as good as film. I thought you'd never be able to digitally create what you could on a bit of plastic film. Yeah, so guys, just a quick wealth warning on Camilla and I. Wildlife photography is highly addictive, so uh, you can end up spending an awful lot of money, especially if you buy the Sony A1. Ooh. What have I actually just spent £750 at Castle Cameras to start my wildlife journey? So here we are. I've gone for the Sony A7 II. So, an A7 II. So the Sony A7 II came out in November 2014. So this is an eight year old camera. Obviously we were really lucky to get this boxed mint condition one from Castle Cameras for £750. And it even came with an extra little pinky grip um, because the grip on the A7 II is a little bit missing. So it's very useful. Got a little pinky grip here as well. This was free. One of the advantages of buying a second-hand camera. So there we are. We've already improved the ergonomics of an old camera for free. So the reasons we purchased this camera was because it was full frame. And um, I know, knowing what I know now, that I will move on to a full frame system. I mean, if you're into a crop sensor system and you feel you're going to stick with a crop sensor system, then stick with that. But I moved from Panasonic Micro Four Thirds specifically to get a full frame system for my butterfly images. So knowing what I know now, I've gone straight for full frame. Now I've just saved myself an absolute fortune in APS-C camera equipment. So this one is practically new. God, blimey. Look at that beauty, guys. I mean, 4,000 shutter actuations. God, doesn't get much better. And with a free pinky grip. Still, I believe this camera is available new. Um, I've seen it listed in various places. It seems to be out of stock, but between 900 and 1,000 pounds. So you can still pick this one up new, but I think it has been phased out now. I don't think Sony are making it anymore. So where does it fit the bill in our criteria for a camera? Well, it's got the ergonomics. Now I've got the little pinky grip. I must admit, that really does help. But we've got nice buttons. We've got nice big buttons. We've got nice dials. Um, we've got fully manual. We've got all the options. We've got a nice dial up here. We've got the exposure compensation clearly done. We've got a reasonably simple menu system. It's not as vast as the A9 series. Um, we have five axis image stabilization. Um, this was one of the first full frame cam mirrorless cameras to have the inbuilt stabilization. 
incredible. And we have 24.3 megapixels on a full frame. So we cover a big area and we're more likely to get our subject in frame than you would, for example, on a crop sensor body. So a good advantage for a beginner. So uh, yeah, you're gonna get more in this frame than an APS-C frame. It also has, uh, I think it was one of the first Exmor CMOS sensors, and uh, I don't think it's, it's not backlit like the modern uh, ones on the uh, A9s. But uh, still, a very good sensor uh, for its day. So we expect some superb images with this. The ISO range goes ooh, from 100 to, I think it's uh, 1,280, uh, 128,000. Not sure anyway, I'll put it below. But um, yeah, it's got quite a good ISO sensitivity range as well. Now, the other thing about this camera is it is slow. And you've got to remember, we have bought this primarily for doing butterflies and insects. I mean, we will move on to static birds, etc. But we're not going for speed. If we were going for speed, I would have to jump everything and probably go to a Sony A9 for speed. But uh, this is the cheap way and a way to see if you like wildlife photography to start with. But with this 24.3 megapixels, we will get a very good static image of a subject. And indeed, if the subject moves, we've also got one four thousandth of a shutter speed to uh, capture the action anyway. And we hardly go above one four thousandth of a second on Camilla and I, only for things like Swifts and things in flight like that. So this camera is more than adequate for taking most subjects, which um, just take off a perch, for example. Incredible. So this should be okay. So although it's not 10 frames per second, it's not 20 frames per second, and um, it's not even a mini really, Perhaps it's more of a Citroen 2CV, um, but it's still, it's good enough to start with. And this is what we're doing with this camera. We're beginning our wildlife journey. And I say, this is how I began. I began with macro subjects. So also we've got um, an XGA OLAD True Finder viewfinder. Now I'm sure we'll find this absolutely terrible as the, uh, the Sony A1 has the most phenomenal viewfinder going. So, uh, yeah, just wishing I was 18 again and uh, starting with this camera when I was that age because it will be considerably more difficult to uh, focus through the viewfinder. But you get used to it. And this, the viewfinder does cover 100% of the screen, I believe. Now, knowing what I know now, I'm not buying this with the kit lens, um, the sort of short range zoom. They are rubbish. So we won't be having that. Just using this for wildlife. And we're just starting in wildlife and we're gonna go for the Sony 90 millimeter macro to pair this. We're not bothering with reversing rings. They're too fiddly. Um, we're splashing the cash out and we're gonna go for another second hand purchase 650 quid for the 10th sharpest lens in the world. Absolute bargain at Castle Cameras at the moment. 650 quid and you've got the 10th sharpest lens in the world. 90 millimeter f2.8 macro. Ooh, awesome. So this is how Camilla and I started in wildlife photography. We started with the macro butterflies and insects and um, obviously we're picking Sony now. Then I picked Panasonic, and indeed I went on to uh, the Nikon D750, Nikon D850, and the uh, 90 millimeter Nikon lens. But now we do far more, obviously, than just macro photography. But that's how we started. And it just keeps things simple, because you've got to get work out whether you're actually going to enjoy this hobby 
or interest or what, how far you're going to take it. Obviously, on Camilla and I, we've taken it to new levels. Mm. So we will try this camera out and use it with other lenses in the future. But for now, we're really learning the craft of wildlife photography and going back to basics. And that's why we've got a basic camera until we get bored of macro photography. So in the next episode, I'll try and set this camera up. We'll try and uh, set the settings and get some basic shots just round about. Um, yeah, I'll um, be photographing my daughter's uh, bearded dragon. God. <laughs> One of those inherited university pets. Um, it never dies. Don't get a bearded dragon. Let me know in the comments below if you've inherited a pet where you're... Uh, daughter's gone off to uh, university or son and they've left you a pet to look after anyway it makes quite a nice subject to photograph so we'll get a few beardy shots and um, we'll see what butterflies fly into the garden and indeed we'll just do a static subject and things like that to start just to uh, just to get the camera set and get the basics right and then we'll go from there okay well I hope to see you in the next episode so yeah, it's a bit of a beginner's wildlife um, adventure and um, yeah this is literally the camera I've chosen let me know your choice of beginner camera so uh, Sony have certainly not got the monopoly on wildlife photography or cameras so uh, yeah let me know what you're choosing so we're going to concentrate on digital wildlife photography with the Sony a7 II and uh, we'll see what results we can get with the uh, with this camera. It's not a Sony A1, so this should uh, be quite a challenge on Camilla and I. Yeah. Anyway, hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now. Cheers from Camilla A7 II and I. <laughs>